was a Saturday morning, uh, it was my day off, I got called by my boss telling us that there was a taper trapped in San Isidro in a trench in a, someone's house. It's very uncommon for tapers to walk so much into the, someone's property. What happened is that apparently from Braulio Carrillo, from the National Park, a cat attacked the tapir and he ran so fast, so far, that he went into the town and got trapped in the trench and he couldn't get out because he was really tired and he was hurt. Tapirs are the largest neotropical mammal and they can weigh up to 300 kilos and they have a key role when it comes to forest restoration and maintenance. That's why they are considered the gardeners of the forest. We packed up everything we had, we, we prepared um, the dart gun and everything. So when we went there, uh, the tapir was trapped in a trench between two properties inside of, of a hole. Right now in Costa Rica we live in a context where wildlife encounters with people are increasing. We attended a case of a tapir that was found injured in Heredia, close to human settlements. We attended the case with SINAC, local communities, and a major role of the Tuca Rescue Ranch, where they provided all the vet assistance. So I basically climbed up to a tree and, and was upside down. One of the Minai officers was holding my hand so I couldn't like fall. And with a really long injector, I was hold, like on my side and I injected him and after we injected him they pulled him out when he was tranquilized and then we have to inject him like uh, other three times to make sure he fall completely asleep. Uh, I do remember that, that her, pulling him out was, was very difficult. I remember everyone pulling the rope to take him out of the trench and at the same time being ready to run because we couldn't have him very anesthetized. We needed him to be able to walk out of the trench and then we have to like inject him very fast so he could fall asleep so we can work on him. With me there was my boss, Janet, the, the veterinary director, and my two interns, uh, Andres and Santiago. And between the four of us, we were going around the tapir, patching him up, the stitching really fast, putting antibiotic. We talked to Minai people and they were, they were on our side. They, they want him like back into the wild as fast as possible. So we <laughs> carry him on, on a blanket that the owner of the property lent us. We put him on, a, on the car. <laughs> so on the back of the car there was Andres and Esteban, the night conservation person, two of the Minai officers. I was going in the front with Janet and we were just passing uh, hands uh, anesthesia in case the taper we will wake up. It was really, really important to be able to be there and translocate the animal to a safe location. There were some risks in the area like dogs, cars, so we needed to move the animal up to the forest. We took him really up, up, up on the mountain, really close to Bradley Carrillo, and then we put him down the car and then we have to wait like three to four hours for him to fully wake up. And then he woke up and he kept trying to go back into town. So we made like a human barrier uh, trying to scare him until eventually he decided to go back into the forest. When we see a tapir, we're talking about less than 5,000 individuals worldwide. So every individual counts. And being able to provide the proper conditions so it can be returning back to the forest immediately, that's key for its survival. Rescue centers can provide a key role for conservation when it comes to rescuing those individuals that can be really valuable for the species' survival. After this, we were really, really excited because he was successful. And it was the first time that Minai completely trusted us with that animal that it was out of or the uh, usual animals we received. It was really, really fun. It was difficult, but fun. <laughs>